The CIA has done some pretty shady things, but do any of them compare to when they secretly bought an airline for spy missions, spook insertions, and drug running during the Vietnam War? What the CIA did with their secret airline and the pilots that flew it will blow your mind. There are a lot of things the CIA have done that they don't want the public to know about. This was especially true during their fight against communism and the Vietnam War, but even classified documents tend to be leaked from time to time. Others are released to the public when the information in them is no longer deemed sensitive. This is how we know that in 1959, the CIA purchased a company called Civil Air Transport, renamed it Air America, and used it for their own intel, insertion, and extraction operations in Southeast Asia. But there was also a darker side to the Air American flights under CIA supervision. Most of the pilots that flew for the company had no idea who they were actually working for or what their cargo was. In 1990, a film called Air America was released starring Mel Gibson and Robert Downey Jr. about the more questionable missions that the CIA ran using their newly acquired airline. The movie depicts Air America planes transporting heroin and other illicit goods in and out of East Asia. But is there any truth to the story? Did the CIA use their secret airline to move drugs? As can be expected, the CIA has not been the most forthcoming with the information. Although the CIA did not use Air America explicitly for the shipment of drugs, there is definitely evidence to show that there was some drug running going on. At the very least, the CIA did not try to stop the shipment of drugs being smuggled using Air America planes, which makes them complicit in some of the drug trafficking that was happening in the region. The real reason that the CIA ignored the drugs being smuggled across borders on their airline was because this was a main source of income for anti-communist forces in Laos. The Mayo, who were fighting against the Patet Lao rebels, depended on poppy farming to fund their operations. The most lucrative side of poppy cultivation was opium. But the Lao rebels began to gain more and more territory, and as they did, the Mayo lost airfields that had been used to ship the drug across Asia. The CIA couldn't let the Mayo forces fall to the communists, but they also couldn't get directly involved in the opium trade as the United States was not supposed to be in the business of trafficking drugs. The US was also not supposed to be involved in the war happening in Laos, so they decided to use a different tactic. The only major airline flying into and out of northern Laos was Air America. Whether it was under explicit orders by the CIA or done by turning a blind eye, Air America began flying the Mayo's opium out of the country on their planes. It was reported that the opium would be transported to airfields which were supposed to be for civilian and cargo use and located onto the Air America planes. These situations would not be the first or last time the pilots were told to not ask questions or examine the cargo they were carrying. From northern Laos, the Air America planes would fly the opium to different parts of Southeast Asia. The CIA was literally trafficking drugs on their secret airline, whether they would admit it or not. But it gets even more messed up. Although there's no concrete evidence of where the opium would eventually end up, it is very probable that the drug was being brought to laboratories where it was cooked into heroin. The heroin would then be sold to addicts who craved the drug. A large source of these addicts were United States military personnel who were fighting in Vietnam. So it is possible that using their secret airline, the CIA aided in providing heroin to thousands and thousands of American soldiers who had become addicted to the drug during the hells they were experiencing in the Vietnam War. The CIA's complacency in the trafficking of drugs on their secret airline to fund anti-communist forces in Laos most likely did a lot more harm than good. This brings us back to what the airline was actually supposed to be used for. Originally, Civil Air Transport was a commercial airline that operated in China. It was founded by Whitting Willerby and a retired U.S. military pilot named Claire Lee Chenault. Their goal was to conduct flights that would provide food and resources to anti-Mao forces in China while also being a passenger airline. Regardless of the actual purpose Civil Air Transport was founded, when Mao finally seized control of China, the airline started to bleed money. The owners needed to sell, and the CIA was all too happy to take the company off their hands. With the communist threat in Asia growing, the Central Intelligence Agency needed a way to conduct covert missions in the region. Their newly acquired airline would do just that. Air America still flew regular flights with passengers into and out of Taiwan, but there were also other uses for the airline's planes, most notably the ability to allow agents to enter cities that would have been otherwise off-limits. This was done by disguising them as passengers aboard Air America flights. Since the CIA was in control of all aircraft under the Air America umbrella, they could manipulate their employees into doing pretty much whatever they wanted. Pilots who were hired most likely did not know they were working for the CIA, but if their boss told them to do something, they either did it or were fired. This included instances where pilots were told not to ask questions, talk to a passenger, or even look at who they were carrying. A former Air America pilot named Neil Hansen recounted one such flight. He was the pilot of a small passenger plane that flew out of Vietnam. 
Just before what was supposed to be a routine flight, Hansen was pulled aside and told that there had been a change of plans. His new orders were to fly a man out of Vietnam and into Thailand. There would be no legal formalities or documentation for the flight. Obviously, this seemed odd to Hansen, but as tensions were high in this region of the world, he thought it better not to ask too many questions. Hansen was also told that the man he would be carrying would need to skip customs and immigration as well. This meant that the boarding and unloading of the passenger would need to be done in secret. Hansen remembered his superiors telling him under no circumstances was he to talk to or even look at the passenger he was carrying. A legitimate flight plan that was filed saying the plane would take off from Saigon and land in Bangkok. However, all flight routes also needed to contain an alternate landing site if a problem arose. For Hansen's flight, Takali, Thailand was the alternate landing site. This airfield was much smaller and would have barely any airport or government security working there. He was assured by US officials that no one would question his decision to land at the alternate site. It was assumed that the CIA had sent an agent to the Bangkok airport to make sure everything went smoothly for Hansen. The flight took off from Saigon and flew over the border to Thailand. Just before he was supposed to set down in Bangkok, Hansen radioed the tower and informed them that he needed to divert his route to the alternate landing site. They acknowledged his request and Hansen changed course with his unknown passenger aboard. The plan went off without a hitch. Hansen landed the plane at Takli where there was a black car with curtained windows waiting for them. The passenger got off, entered the car, and drove off. Hansen and his passenger did not have a single interaction. After the passenger departed, Hansen's plane was refueled and prepared for the return journey to Saigon. He moved into position for takeoff. As he accelerated down the runway, two Thai army jeeps sped out onto the tarmac. They blocked Hansen's route. Hansen decelerated and came to a stop just in front of the vehicles. Thai soldiers had their guns raised aimed right at the cockpit. Hansen was escorted off the plane. He was detained for a week by the Thai authorities. But since he knew nothing about the passenger he was carrying or that he was actually working for the CIA, Hansen didn't have any information to give up. He was just an Air American pilot who was following a flight plan. Eventually, the Thailand authorities released Hansen and he was sent to Saigon where he resumed his flights for the secret CIA airline. Air America wasn't just used to fly spies and other persons of interest into countries, it was also used to get people out of dangerous situations. The most famous example of this was during the evacuation of Saigon, where 24 Air American helicopters were used to rescue around 7,000 people and transport them to safety. But this wasn't the only time that Air America aircraft were used to evacuate personnel. For supposedly being a commercial airline, the Air America planes and helicopters were put into harm's way and dangerous situations a lot of the time. Air America pilots would drop supplies and extract US Special Forces soldiers from combat zones. The aircraft would also carry out photo reconnaissance missions of areas controlled by the Viet Cong. Basically, Air America was being used as a branch of the United States Air Force. These missions were often conducted without any explanation as to why a commercial aircraft would be so heavily engaged in war efforts. The pilots had no idea they were actually working for the CIA, but when they were given dangerous routes to fly, orders to extract downed Air Force pilots or picking up special ops personnel from enemy territory, they probably started to get suspicious of who their actual employer was. When the Vietnam War ended and the CIA no longer had use for their secret airline, in 1976 the company was dissolved. The pilots were given final flight plans to bring the aircraft to the Philippines where they could board transport back to the US. Their tenure at Air America had come to an end. And this is where things get really messed up. The pilots who risked their lives on covert CIA missions while flying for Air America were now out of a job without so much as an explanation. Pilots had been lost to sabotaged planes, enemy fire, and the chaos that ensued from evacuations. For all intents and purposes, the Air America pilots were working for the US military. Not only that, they were employed by a government agency, which meant that they should receive some of the benefits that other government employees enjoy, like a pension and healthcare. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. Since the CIA needed to keep their involvement in Air America a secret, the pilots who risked their lives were laid off, and that was the end of their story, as far as the US government was concerned. All in all, around 240 Air American employees lost their lives during the Vietnam War, and those who survived were not recognized for their contributions until over a decade later. When documents finally came out that Air America was owned and operated by the CIA, some other former pilots band together to try and get the United States government to provide them the benefits that other government employees received. The fact was they were employed and worked for a government organization. Sadly, Air America employees are still fighting this battle. In 2021, a bill called the Air America Act of 2021 is making its way through Congress. If it's passed, the bill would make the former Air America pilots employees of the government and eligible for federal benefits. It would also force the CIA to officially recognize the flights that were carried out by Air America as government missions. It's been over 40 years since Air America was dissolved, and this entire time the United States government has refused to acknowledge that the pilots and workers at the company were actually federal employees. 
Now check out 10 craziest CIA covert operations, or watch 50 insane facts about the Vietnam War you didn't know.